What's going on? Ms. Ruth, you are in dangerous Why waters. If those men find out you're playing them, all dead. What's up, YouTube? It's your boy, it's your homie, Futuristic Mike, and I'm back with another Tyler Perry's Ruthless video if you're new. Now, this is going to be the review and recap for Ruthless Season 2, Episode 3. If you're a fan of Ruthless, if you love Ruthless, hit the like on this video. If you're new to my channel and this is the first time you're finding me, subscribe and turn on those post notifications so when I post videos on Ruthless, you get them. Now, the title to this episode is Holding On By A Thread. And the description for this episode reads, Oliver turns to Andrew for help. Daikon reveals shocking news to the highest. Tempers flare between Ruth and Tally. And Clark sets out on a mission. Now, once again, it was another good episode, man. This season just keeps getting crazier and crazier. I mean, we are watching a show about a religious cult. And if you guys go on Google the internet and look up famous religious cults and you look up stuff that has happened in real life then you're gonna see that you know when it comes to these religious cults and stuff they don't be playing around man some crazy stuff really does go down a lot of people watch this show and say damn this is disturbing and stuff like that but you gotta remember we're watching a show about a cult so it's just gonna get worse and worse from here like, you think we've seen a lot already, right? In season one and stuff. It's only gonna get worse, and I can promise you that. So, we just gotta wait and see how everything plays out. But it's just gonna get crazier and crazier. And I cannot wait to see it, because this show keeps me on the edge of my seat. But I'll give this episode a 9 out of 10. When the episode first starts, we see Oliver talking to Andrew. And, you know, Andrew is just now finding out that Oliver killed Lilo and Oliver wants Andrew's help. You know, Andrew says that he's going to help him. So they have to figure out a plan to get rid of the body. Now, next we see Daikon talking to the highest and they're talking about how Daikon needs to chill out with River. You know, the highest says that he doesn't trust River and they need to get along. And Daikon says that he just does not trust them. And so the highest says, who do you trust? And Daikon says, I trust you. And the highest is like, who else do you trust? Daikon says if Andrew returns, then he'll trust him to a degree. And then after this, Daikon informed the highest that he found a hole in the fence by a thread. He said it was just holding on by a thread. So somebody must want to escape. And the highest said, are you sure somebody wants to escape? And Daikon says, yes, I know what I saw. So pretty much the highest, he's just freaking out. He's just saying to find out if somebody really does want to leave and to let him know what's going on. But he's really freaking out, man. You know, because he does not want anybody to leave this place. Now, next we see Joan talking to River and River is saying how he doesn't think that it's a good idea that these people leave tonight. And Joan says that, you know, there's the car waiting. They have to leave. It's the only way they have to get out there and help from the outside while they work from the inside so they can set all this up so they can get the money and so they can escape. But River just doesn't think this is a good idea. And Joan is saying just to trust her that it has to happen. Joan wants to get the hell up out of there. And River's just worried that the people that are escaping, they might get caught and that they'll tell everybody that was involved in the escape plan and river says if that happens they're all dead but yeah joan wants to get out of there now next we see tally and ruth in the trailer and tally's getting ready to leave she's getting ready to go and see yancey and she says she's making her own way she's not staying here any longer and ruth says look you don't need to do that i got away and tally says look you always sleep your way to the top. Tally says it's just like before when we were with that pimp and you slept your way to the top so you can have everything. She said it's the same as before. You don't care about me. She said you don't give a damn about me, Tavia or Callie. And Ruth gets so mad that she slaps Tally and then Tally fights back. You know, they're trying to choke each other and stuff and they fight for a little bit, but then they stop 
and Ruth says, Tally, come on, you cannot leave. If you do, you'll get killed. You will not make it. So pretty much, you know, they're just arguing in this scene about what Tally should do because Tally wants to get out of there. I understand Tally's getting frustrated from being in here, but, you know, she didn't have to say all that stuff to Ruth. I still want to know when Tally is going to commit suicide. We've seen that happen in the Oval, but we still have not seen that play out in Ruthless yet. And I'm just wondering when that's going to happen. There's a lot of fans that are still wondering, like, when that part's coming. Now, next we see William trying to get this wood pile again. And Andrew walks up and says, son, what are you doing? So William says that he has to get this wood pile. He says that he has to get stronger and that's why he's doing it. He said he's pushing it back and forth so he can get stronger. And Andrew is like, why would you want to get stronger? He says, so when the government comes in that he can be strong and fight back. And Andrew says, really, that's it? And William says, because I want to get stronger to stop the highest from what he's doing to me. I guess the highest rapes William every night and he doesn't want him to eat to keep his bowels clean and stuff. And it's just completely disgusting. You know what he was saying about the highest. I can't believe the highest does this to William every night. But Andrew says, look, let me show you something. So he grabs William and flips him to the ground. He performs a crazy move on him. And he says, look, I'll teach you that so you can defend yourself. And William says, for real, you'll teach me? Teach me right now. And Andrew says, no, not right now, but I will teach you, I promise. And then after William leaves, Andrew looks inside the wood pile and he sees the dead body and his face just looks disgusted. Now next we see Clark and Oliver at the gate. And Clark had me so weak at this part because he said, you know what I could use right now? A banana split with the nuts and chocolate and everything. I was laughing so hard at that part for some reason because it's like in this place, they don't have none of that good food or nothing. They just have the same old shit. So of course a banana split is gonna sound good to somebody that's living in there. You know what I mean? But yeah, um, Oliver is like, I guess it sounds good. And Clark wants to know what's wrong with Oliver and he says nothing. But then Daikon comes to the gate and says he wants to see Clark. So Clark goes with Daikon and Daikon shows Clark the hole in the fence. He tells Clark that somebody must be trying to escape and he tells him to keep his eyes and ears open for anything and to let him know if he sees anything, if he sees anybody escaping. Now, we see Elder Mother go to talk to Oliver and she's like, where is he? Where's Lilo? And Oliver tells Elder Mother that he left with somebody. He said somebody came to pick him up. And she says, really, why is his car still parked here then? And he says, I don't know, maybe it wouldn't start or something. So Elder Mother says, oh, okay, I'll go let Elder Mother know then so she knows what happened to him. And then she says, you know, he's not a good man, but we need him. You know, he's valuable to the compound. It's like the way people say stuff to Oliver about Lilo. It's like they kind of suspect him of something. You know what I mean? Because everybody knew that Oliver looked at Lilo crazy. Everybody knew that that dude did not like him. Now, next we see Paula talking to Zane. And, you know, Zane is just trying to talk Paula out of not going with the rest of the people that are escaping. And Paula says that she's going no matter what. She has to get out of here. And Zane says, no, you have to wait. It's not safe. So then they go look out the window. I guess Paula is waiting for the people to escape so she can go out there and escape with them. Now, next, we see Andrew go out and talk to Oliver. And he says that, you know, William had the wood pile. So Oliver is like, really? Are you serious? Did he see the body? And Andrew says, I don't think so. But he told Oliver that he took care of it and he put it somewhere safe for now. And Andrew says, how did you even cut up a body anyways? And Oliver says, man, I used to do things before I came here. He said I was in prison. I was in a gang and we did a lot of crazy shit in prison. Oliver said he had to do it, you know, eye for an eye. And Andrew is like, that's not eye for an eye, though. And Oliver said, not literally. But he was doing things to girls and letting them get raped, so I had to do it. Andrew tells him to get rid of the body that night as soon as everybody's asleep. 
Now, next we see Tally go to Yancey and talk to him, and he's drinking. He said he's drinking moonshine that he made or something like that. And, you know, he's drunk as hell. And Tally says, you want to do this or what? And, of course, he's on it. He dumps that moonshine out, and he gets up and runs over to the bus. Now, next we see this group of people escaping. And Paula and Zane are at the window. And, of course, Paula wants to go. And Zane keeps on saying, no, please do not go. Don't go. And these people just escape one by one, and they all get out. Then we see Clark go to see Daikon, and he tells Daikon everything. He says he's seen some people escaping. Daikon wants to know how many. He says six, and he says that he only seen the married couple. He couldn't see who else. The next we see Elder Mother Agnes go to talk to the other Elder Mother, and she says that Lilo left because Oliver told her that, you know, Lilo left with somebody. So they were both surprised and shocked because they didn't think he left. But they said he's never gone for long. But yeah, he's going to be gone forever. He ain't coming back. Now next we see Andrew go to see Daikon. And Andrew just proves to Daikon that he killed Sarah. He shows him news articles. You know, he shows him proof on his phone that it was on the news and stuff. And Daikon is surprised. He's shocked. He didn't think that Andrew had it in him. So he goes up to Andrew and I couldn't believe it. He kissed him. He said, thank God, I didn't know if you were with us, but I guess you are. I guess you showed your loyalty. So they're going to see the highest together. They go into the highest trailer and Daikon says to the highest that Andrew actually did it. He went through with it and the highest says, yes, I knew you were with us. And Andrew says he heard about the people trying to escape. The highest says, how did you hear about that? And Daikon says that he told him. And then Andrew says, you do not deserve that. Now, next we see Lynn in her bedroom and Brian comes in and he's trying to talk to her, man. You know, she kind of dogged him in the last episode. And he's just saying that he cares for her. He loves her and stuff. And she's still saying that he's not enough. You know, that he's boring. He's too perfect. And she just wants him different. And then Brian walks away and then she acts like she wants him. She's so confused, it's not even funny. She starts calling his name and stuff. I mean, this woman is just so confused. She needs to get off the drugs and figure out what she wants. Now, next, we see Andrew walking in front of the bus, and he sees something going on inside the bus. He sees some activity, and it's Yancey looking like he's getting head from Tally, or he's smashing her or something. But this is the end of the episode. It's about to go down, man. You know, when Andrew finds out what's going on with Yancey and Tally, it's definitely gonna go down. But things are getting crazy. The highest is super upset that people are escaping. He's been informed that people got out of the compound and it's just gonna get crazy, man. I wonder what the highest is gonna do to these people. But I think this was a great episode. I'll give it a nine out of 10. What did you guys think of this episode? Comment down below. What are your theories, thoughts, predictions, and everything else? Keep supporting your boy, and I'll be continuing to bring y'all ruthless content in the future. Make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe, and smash that notification bell so you can never miss a video. If you guys want to donate to the channel, I got links below to the PayPal and Cash App accounts. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me get out of here, y'all. It's your boy Futuristic Mike, and I'll talk to you on the next one. I'm out. Peace.